Hey everybody, it's Jessica Zinko. I am reviewing chapter five, Becoming a Shock in Coercion and its Fallout by Marie Sidman. In chapter five on Becoming a Shock, Sidman focuses heavily on coercive tactics and punishment and how he and many others disapprove of these practices due to the detrimental side effects they create. He goes into detail about punishment and how it's been utilized throughout human history and is still utilized today. This chapter focuses on the argument that punishment is often misunderstood and misused and how this misuse can pose problems. Sidman states in the beginning of chapter three that punishing bad behavior is also supposed to teach good behavior. He elaborates on this idea by referencing spanking children when they're bad, pointing missiles at other countries to show them how to negotiate in good faith, and how society views latency and ease at universities by how many students fail a course. This quote by Sidman is not true. Punishment is not supposed to teach good behavior. Well, it's not going to teach good behavior without a replacement behavior. Um, he goes in and references non-coercive punishments in the section called punishment has side effects. He says these non-coercive punishments are being non-traditional, they're unfamiliar, and that's why they're not used because it's so complex to implement and the progression is slow towards change behavior. He says that using punishment may be easier, but the side effects are much more det detrimental. Punishment and coercion techniques have been introduced into society without testing and thus should not be utilized. Sidman states that the science of behavior analysis provides rational systematic account of consequences of coercion and goes kind of into detail why this behavior of analysis is a much better implementation technique versus punishment. In a section from bad to worse, how punishers are made. Sidman begins this portion of the chapter discussing environmental punishers and how they affect individuals, or I guess how society expects individuals to react. He references, you know, removing a hand from a stove to avoid being burned. Um, avoiding painful stimuli unless the reinforcement is greater than the stimuli itself. Sidman provides an example of injecting insulin. The reward of having the insulin injection decreases the likelihood of a diabetic coma. That's greater than the painful stimuli of the injection itself. He calls these natural punishers. These punishers usually stop behaviors immediately and do not depend on any other circumstances. Hence, removing your hand from a stove because you're getting burned. He then goes into details referencing condition punishers and that these punishers depend on circumstances. So they're different from the natural punishers. He mentioned that these conditions are easily manipulated within a lab, but sometimes it's more difficult to pinpoint what the nat within a naturalistic setting. Sidman provides examples for condition punishers mentioning reading a door sign to either push or pull the door. You're gonna be rewarded for reading the sign by getting in the door by following the directive of push or pull. If you pull a door on a that says push, you're not gonna get inside. Therefore, you're not following the conditioned punisher. Um, talking only in the listens of, or the presence of a listener and the early bird gets the worm. These are all examples. Um, and they're all reinforcing examples if this is utilized appropriately. He mentions that similar to the above examples, these types of contingencies are present within the punishers as well. We as individuals learn can learn these con conditions and to distinguish situations where these consequences are likely to occur. This is where Sidman begins to reference control and how elements of the environment gain control by signaling reinforcers or punishers and therefore providing contingencies to better understand its functions. Sidman focuses on the idea that conditioned reinforcers control human behavior and poses the question, can the same process create conditioned punishers? 
he mentions experiments where contingencies are manipulated in order to test this theory. And the answer is yes. He finds that conditioned punishers can be created and these punishments are viewed as a major side effect to using punishment. In the section, the significance of conditioned punishment. Sidman so begins this section by focusing on punishment and how it affects humans in high frequencies. The more frequently punishers are encountered, the less satisfying life may become. He discusses that the more punishment that is encountered, the more negative reinforcers that are created within the environment. The individual may focus merely on ways to avoid and escape these punishers. He references this as coercive control and the act of avoiding said control as counter control, counter coercion. Sidman states that the first side effect of coercion is conditioned punishment and people who use punishment will then in time become punishers themselves. Do you agree with this statement? If so, provide an example of a time where this could happen or has happened. And if not, please explain why you disagree. Thanks.